Hey everyone, welcome back. Good to see you again. Today we're talking about how to survive all the way to 60 with the Soul of Iron buff, never known defeat in Season of Mastery. Now, it is my firm belief that it is easily possible to get to 60 without dying in Season of Mastery, especially since we have increased experience from quests. It's pretty quick, it's pretty easy, uh, and actually that increased experience really lends itself for uh, not dying, actually. And I'm going to go through nine ways that I have gone through Season of Mastery so far, not dying, not died. Now, I will admit I'm not level 60 yet, but at this point it's kind of getting boring. I no longer fear dying. It's pretty easy, and I just found a few principles that if you abide by, virtually guarantees that you will get to 60 without dying. And, you know, to clarify, I'm not doing hardcore, right? I'm just doing Soul of Iron. Just don't die, okay? No additional rules. Just don't die. So, number one. This is pretty straightforward, but... Fight mobs lower level than you. I've always found that, you know, you're going to have increased chance to hit. You're not going to get parried as much. You're not going to get dodged as much. Uh, if you're fighting mobs lower level than you, it's just a, a great... It's it's so much easier. And I'm, I'm going through as a warrior, so this really matters. You know, if you're playing a different class, you know, maybe this doesn't apply as much to you. But even if you are, say, a hunter where this would be super easy, well, if you abide by this rule... Uh, I guarantee no matter what class you play, uh, you're going you're gonna to have a much higher chance of staying alive. So fight mobs lower level than you. Obviously, you don't want to fight gray mobs. I've done it, though, because I was doing like a green quest, and it's like, well, whatever, right? Now, this might not be the fastest way to get to 60, but it is certainly the safest way to get to 60. So fighting mobs lower level than you. If you're 33, fight a level 32 or 31, so on. Uh, even if they're gray, but that's not going to give you experience unless they're for a quest, then maybe it makes sense to do that, but... That is tip number one. Now, tip number two is know when to run. This is a really important one, and I feel like most people die when they don't just run away. You know, you could completely avoid death if you just know when to run. And this is sort of, you know, there's a couple different scenarios. You could uh, aggro a second mob. You could be at uh, a good amount of health, and you're like, oh, I could take them both. Well, you know, the skilled player, the player who is prepared and knows how to not die, will know when to run and say, okay, you know what, there's two mobs, I'm just not going to risk it, I'm just going to run. You know, it, it might slow down your progress. You know, you, that mob that you had, half health or nearly dead, you know, it sucks to just let them get away and get all their health back, but it's that or you die, right? Many players are not willing to let that mob go back and regenerate all its health. They want to kill it, perhaps they wait too long and then they're too low and then maybe they get dazed and, oh, there they go, they're dead, right? So, know when to run. There could be a, another scenario where... Uh, maybe you did stay long enough and you got a lucky crit and you're like, oh, wow, I was planning on running, but now maybe I should stay because that was a really big crit and I think I can win this fight. Well, you know, once again, when it's when it's that close of a call, you could really run the risk of actually dying. So just know when to run, play conservatively, just realize that, you know, just be patient, really. Being patient should be a point of its own, honestly, but knowing when to run is going to save you a lot Basically, you're going to want to run when you have more health than when you have less health. If you run when it's too late, well, well then obviously it's too late and you're going to die. All right, let's move on to point number three. Always have healing potions on hand. This is a huge one. I, I honestly can say uh, healing potions have saved me so many times. And, you know, I was leveling as Alliance, leveling as Alliance, and I was like, wow, so many quests give you healing potions as you level. I always had healing potions. And uh, I use them only if I needed to. I really push the limits on this. Um, you know, if, if I was like at 20% health and I was like, I think I can finish this fight without a healing potion, I would save that healing potion. So I, I only use them if I like absolutely had to and it was almost like an, a one-up or like an extra life. Uh, healing potions are amazing. Always have them on hand. Always, always, always. Um, and so, you know, that lends... Uh, you know, that tip lends itself to maybe go alchemy herbalism uh, in Season of Mastery. I think it's a fantastic idea if you want to have healing potions always on hand. But also, go out of your way and grab chests. I found so many potions in chests. I'm sure you have too. Great drop chance there, and you're going to always have uh, a healthy stock of potions. So, always have that on hand. It's going to save your life probably more than once. All right, now tip number four. Try not to pull more than one mob at a time. Now, you know, once again, I played as a warrior. And, uh, you know, there were times where I, I fought mobs that were my level or maybe a level higher or two. And, uh, yeah, you're going to not you're going to want to only do one at a time. You know, if you're a hunter, if you're a warlock, you have CC, you're a mage, you got sheep, uh, if you're a rogue, you got sap, all these different things that help with more than one mob at a time. You know, maybe this rule doesn't apply as much to you. But again, this is sort of 
an overarching rule. If you were a mage and you did have the ability to only pull one mob at a time and ha save that sheep for an emergency, then uh, it's absolutely going to be worth it. So my 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 you know my advice to you: try not to pull more than one mob at a time. It's obviously going to keep you alive. And tip number five, which really goes hand in hand, is really save cooldowns for emergencies. You know, it's it's not the fastest, right? But I always saved um, yeah retaliation, right? Uh, for emergencies, let's say I accidentally pulled that second mob. Now you can use retaliation. It's no big deal whatsoever uh, Again, we're playing to survive. We just want to get to 60 without dying. We're not speed leveling. We're not doing anything fancy here We're just getting to level 60 without dying. So saving cooldowns for emergencies whether that's retaliation whether that is um, I don't know any other long cooldown bestial wrath. I don't know whatever whatever your cooldown is that has a long cooldown Save it for when you're in those sticky situations where you accidentally might pull more than one mob at a time. Tip number six, do green quests when possible. Now, again, this is not the fastest way to level, but green quests always gave me some breathing room, right? I always felt like if I was doing quests my level, I was like anxious. I was like, oh my gosh, like, am I going to die here, right? If I'm fighting like an ogre, that's my level. They're pretty beefy, you know, maybe your gear isn't keeping up, so it's like, it's scary, but like doing green quests is like, okay, I can kind of like lose focus a little bit and kind of grind like mindlessly and you're still getting experience um, with those green quests. So I highly recommend doing qu green quests when possible. Uh, I saw a lot of people actually doing this as well. Like a human does all of Elwyn Forest doesn't really feel like you're high enough level to go straight into Westfall, so why don't you go over to uh, Dunmorough and do some green quests. It's super easy and you're still going to get some good experience. Worked out really well for me. I'm still alive. So do green quests when possible. Okay, tip number seven. Level trade skills. Now, this actually has been both fun and practical. I've actually really been enjoying Season of Mastery, I have to admit, uh, for the most part. It's you know, um, it's it's given me a point of I've, it's, I've played the game in a way that I've never played before, right? Um, playing for enjoyment, but also trying to stay alive. It's just it's been it's been fun, and leveling trade skills uh, has been part of that fun. I typically always wait till I'm max level to level trade skills. Once I have that epic mount, I can gather nodes very quickly, much more efficiently than walking or running. Um, but this time around, I leveled trade skills, and it was a lot of fun. And I've learned something new, and it's that cooking really integrates seamlessly into leveling. And uh, I feel like probably the majority of players don't level cooking while they level. I really don't think so. But um, it's just, it kind of blew my mind that I never realized cooking is just super easy to integrate with leveling, almost like skinning or first aid. Now, think about this. So humanoids drop cloth for creating, you know, bandages, first aid, right? Well, beasts typically drop meat, and that's for cooking. So whether you're fighting beasts or humanoids, that's basically whether or not you're getting materials for cooking or first aid. Granted, if you fall behind on one of these, that's terrible, and it's going to, you know, you're going to have to go out of your way to catch up. But if you just, even if you just start killing, like, you know, young wolves or whatever, right, right at the beginning of Elwyn Forest, you already have the lean wolf flank, and you can start cooking right away. It's super easy. And there's boars for the boar meat. Uh, and then you get recipes, actually, as you level. Um, you know, I can even think of, um, like, the turtle bisque soup. Like, you're just killing turtles at level 30 in South Shore. Uh, now you got that turtle meat. They actually, that's for a quest. They teach you how to make that turtle bisque uh, soup. And then, boom, now, you, now you've got that recipe. You got all the turtle meat. Whenever you kill turtles, maybe you go to Desolus Shimmering Flats. They also drop turtle meat there. Go ahead and make some more. So it really seamlessly integrates into leveling. And by the way, you get that nice well-fed buff. Get some spirit. Get some stamina. It's going to help you level. So it's a, it's a good time. It's a good thing to do. So I highly recommend you level trade skills. Obviously, alchemy is super important for those healing potions. First aid, very helpful for getting health very back very quickly. Um, all these things actually very seamlessly integrate into leveling, of course. In Season of Mastery, we have the increased spawn of nodes. Uh, whether that's herbalism or mining. Um, so it's absolutely a great time to level your trade skills as you level this time around. Okay, let's move on to tip number eight. Now, in a PvE server, you can go into enemy territory without getting flagged. I didn't know this. I always played on a PvP server, and I figured as an alliance that the Barons was no go. I was like, how am I supposed to get Berserker Stance? I know someone's going to gank me if I try to go to that island off the east coast of the Barons. 
I didn't know this, honestly. So, PvE server. You can go into enemy territory. I would not recommend going into the starting zone. I think you will get flagged if you go there or Capital City. Either way, I wouldn't risk it if you're trying to survive. But do know that you can go into enemy territory without getting flagged. It's not just contested that you're safe. You are also safe uh, in enemy territory, which is like the Barons. I was totally safe there. I was not flagged for PvP. So, Ratchet, I was totally safe, right? Um, so, that's just another tip. Good to know you can go to those places without risk of getting ganked. Okay, moving on to the last final tip, number nine. You guys might think I'm a total wuss for saying this, but again, we're just trying to stay alive. Number nine, I would say avoid dungeons. You know, you never know if you can trust your group, whether or not they're gonna grief you, whether or not they're going to um, be a good group, right? Is it gonna, I mean, you can have good intentions, but you can still be bad at the game, right? Uh, you don't know if your group's going to wipe, and that's the end of your run. Now, of course, you know if you're looking for excitement or risk or, I don't know, whatever it is, maybe you want to do the dungeon, right? Especially in Season of Mastery, you get those, that extra uh, experience from dungeon quests. But if your goal is simply to stay alive, I would not place that. Uh, there's just too many variables. Four other players putting uh, your life in their hands. Personally, I wouldn't do it. You never know. Someone might grief you. Someone might just not be that good, and you might wipe. So those are my nine tips. I believe firmly that if you follow these nine tips, you will get to 60 without dying. Probably might be boring. <laughs> might not be the most fun ever, but I'm enjoying it. It's slow. Very slow, obviously. But I guarantee if you follow these nine tips, you will not die on your way to 60 in Season of Mastery. Hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for more WoW content. Thanks, and take care.